The Lord be with you. We will have chapel each day throughout final exams week, so certainly uh, for those who are awake, it's a great chance to begin your day, or, or maybe you had a 7.30 final already, you can thank God and, and rejoice in, in one down and a few to go. Um, we're in the season of Advent, and even though we kind of, things get jumbled a little because, uh, you know, Christmas at Concordia, and certainly we don't get a chance to celebrate Christmas together, so we're back and forth between Advent and, and Christmas, but, but uh, the readings for this week, uh, John the Baptist certainly is, is the focus, and we'll, we'll have the reading from Mark chapter 1 today that, that tells of John the Baptist and certainly in the hymn. So we'll begin with the invocation and the reading. Please stand as we begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. God's word, the gospel this week, Mark chapter 1, verse 1. The beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in Isaiah the prophet, Behold, I send my messenger before your face who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. John appeared, baptizing in the wilderness and proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And all the country of Judea and all Jerusalem were going out to him and were being baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair and wore a leather belt around his waist and ate locusts and wild honey. And he preached, saying, After me comes one who is mightier than I, the strap of whose sandals I am not worthy to stoop down and untie. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Friends in Christ, I was reading an article recently that suggested that people can be divided into two categories, openers and finishers. There's a simple process to discover which you are. Do you derive more joy from opening a new bottle of something or from finishing the last of the old bottle? Do you feel good about getting that last bit of shampoo out of the bottle and you can throw it away? Or do you just enjoy so much more a fresh new bottle? I don't know. Is the new jar of peanut butter more exciting than the last bit of the old one? Huh? Do you like a fresh notebook and a sharpened pencil opening the shrimp ra- sh- uh, shrink wrap on the new textbook? Or do you like finishing the last paper, the final exam, selling the book back, throwing away the unnecessary notes, filing away the remnant of the class to a box or a file cabinet? If you're a closer, this is a week of bliss for you. Checking them off one by one. Finish this class, finish that class, all the check marks that you get until you get to go home and be done. It's a sense of accomplishment to finish things, and I don't know if we neatly divide only in one or the other, but perhaps there is more joy in one or the other. But what if you're an opener? What do you do with this week? Do you look at the book on your shelf that you never read? Still brand spanking new, it cracks open, and debate whether to sell it back. Or do you think, I'll read this sometime and keep it? Or say, nah, that'll never happen. Take heart. There's a quote from T.S. Eliot's famous poem, The Four Quartets. It's from the section called Little Gidding. It's a famous quote, but T.S. Eliot says this, what we call the beginning is often the end, and to make an end is to make a beginning. The end is where we start from. And so commencement comes at the end of this week, less than a week away. Beginnings and endings for everyone, and so it is with our text for today. The very first words of the Gospel of Mark. It's not often that we get to have the text be chapter 1, verse 1 of a new book. But that's what it is this week. That's what it is today. And it's not just any book, 
It's the gospel of Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Is it curious to you that Mark starts not at the beginning? It's kind of in the middle. Actually, it's mostly toward the end because Jesus is 30 years old already. It doesn't take long to figure out that Mark skips the birth of Jesus, the shepherds, the angels, the wise men. It seems a little unchristmassy of him, don't you think? But Mark is connecting the dots for people in a way that wants to get right to it. He makes sure people know that this is connecting the Old Testament with the New. It's the beginning of the end, but it's a beginning, but it's the end of the Old Testament. The last prophet, John the Baptist, before the Messiah is here, John is present, he's baptizing, just as Isaiah said would happen 700 years earlier, and he's ready to baptize Jesus, this baptism of repentance, which is the preparation for Jesus' ministry, the way to be ready to make the straight paths, the one crying in the wilderness, make straight the, make, prepare the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. And he's going to baptize with the Holy Spirit. So it was the beginning of the end of the wait for the Savior. And it's this idea that baptism connects us to Jesus' life and death. It's a different baptism than John was doing. That was this baptism of preparation, this baptism of repentance. But this connection to Jesus that happens for each of us, as Jesus' ministry began and he touched the lives of so many, John's the briefest of the Gospels. And he really just touches upon enough spots to let us know that Jesus' ministry was for all. It was the fulfillment of everything that had been told up to that time. And so as our turn comes, among those who would look to Jesus, for physical healing, for a message of hope, for the realization that our sins do not alienate us from God irretrievably, but that he came to reconcile us. And so we have been baptized, which is also a beginning and an ending. That that old Adam is drowned and a new person rises up. You think that happened a long time ago at the beginning of your life and maybe you're at the middle of your life or toward the end of your life, wherever you're at in your life. It's a daily ritual. It's a daily drowning of sin and rising forth. It's a new chance every day. It works for the openers and the finishers of us all. And really what it does is remind us that that was Jesus' role, the author and perfecter of our faith, the starter and finisher, the one with whose beginning we realize the hope is fulfilled, the promise of the Messiah, and with whose end as he said on the cross, it is finished, only turned into another beginning. Eternal life. And eternal life is something that we already enjoy, but not fully. And so is it the beginning of the end of that? The baptism is the beginning of the end of life, which only signals another beginning. And maybe T.S. Eliot had it right. It's all beginnings and endings. So it is the beginning of the end of the semester, the first day of finals week. It's a day that we live in hope once again, that Christ is risen, he came, he lived, he died, he rose again. 
So whether you're close to done with your finals or not at all, Jesus has finished it all well. In Jesus' name, amen.